Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Father, thank you today for this epistle on leadership, for the Word of God is the definition, the Spirit and faith bring the application. Grace allows us to have your thoughts. We pray for the class tonight, also for those traveling over this holiday. Keep them wherever they go. Keep them, first of all, spiritual. Christmas, Christmas can be carnal. Keep them spiritual because of your grace. Protect travel. Protect stomachs from overeating. And, uh, who knows what else. So, Father, we thank you. Pray that you bless our night tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. The main subject of tonight's class will be faith. And I think that's a, a theme that runs through First and Second Timothy and Titus. And I was thinking today, if, if a leader had all the qualities of First Timothy chapter 3 and had no faith, what good is it? Like, if he, okay, he's got, he's got every quality, and he's like blameless and all that. So just look at these qualities. This is a true saying. If a man, 1 Timothy 3, 1, if a man desire the office of bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given the hospitality, able to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that rules his own house, and on and on. And I was just thinking to myself on the way down, if he has all these qualities, that's fantastic, and we really desire to see those qualities in a leader. But if a leader was you know, given the hospitality, able to teach of good behavior and all that, but he had no faith, he wasn't a man or it wasn't a woman who promoted faith, then really what's, what would that leader actually accomplish? And so I think when you look at the life of Paul and you see Paul discipling and teaching Timothy and Titus and many others, you see there's a man of faith that is a great example to them. And I think that is very important. That's, that's key. For without faith, it's impossible to what? Are you with me tonight? Okay. For without faith, it's impossible to please God because he must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith, it's what? So there are some things that are not possible for God to do. You can't please God without living by faith. It's impossible to please him unless you live by faith. So, back to 1 Timothy chapter 6 now. And we want to look at uh, the word faith in the 6th chapter. And there's really five instances of faith here. Five different aspects of faith in this chapter. And the first one is in chapter 6, verse 10. And it's talking about the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, we, and we talked about covetousness versus contentment, remember? Are you with me tonight? Okay, I know it's the last class. Stay tuned. <laughs> and you are. While some have coveted after, when, when you have a desire, not just for money, but for anything other than God, that it brings in great opportunity for error. And the word error is the, is the word apoplaneo, A-P-O-P-L-A-N-A-O. A-P-O-P-L-A-N-A-O. And it really means to wander, to be seduced and to wander. So when somebody is in error, it's because they have mentally and willfully wandered and kind of been led astray into some area outside of God's thinking. So he says, because of the love of money is the root of all evil. Some have coveted after money and they've erred. They've wandered. And they've wandered from the what? They wandered from what? The faith. 
They've wandered from the faith. So something, there's something, the enemy initiates things towards people's lives to get them to wander from the faith. All right? Korah, and who happened to be in Moses' family in some aspect, along with Aaron and Miriam, Aaron and Miriam, Moses' brother and sister, attacked him for marrying an Ethiopian woman. Now, whether or not we conclude what Moses did was right or wrong, you must be very careful when you're going after Moses because you know the results of what happened to uh, Aaron because he was high priest, was disciplined less than Miriam, who was Moses' sister, who was familiar. Miriam became familiar with her own brother, and God gave her, what did she get for her reward? She got leprosy, and she was put outside the camp. And, and they, they, you wander from the faith. Error, err from the faith. So you see Achan in Judges or Joshua chapter 7, because he coveted the things that people had, and he hid the gold talents in his tent, he erred from the faith. Are you with me? Hmm? He erred from the faith. He wandered and was seduced away from faith. And there are so many things that are natural that can get us to err from the faith. Just natural things. They may not be bad things. They might just be good things. I can take a job, and it could cause, cause me to err from the faith. Are you with me? Are you sure you're paying attention? Not everybody is. Otherwise, I wouldn't say it. Okay? There are things that happen in life that will cause me to err from the faith. A relationship could cause you to what? Err from the faith. Oh, he's, she's so, he's so. He's so, she's so. Well, he's so, she's so has got you erring from the faith. That's why I think you ought to just like forget about those things until you get out of Bible school. Because by then you might finally have a brain. So you would even know who is spiritual and who is not. So the relationship can cause you to what? Err from the faith. An old sin nature, stronghold, can cause me to what? Err from the faith. Really, wrong thinking patterns cause me to err from the faith. And it's really interesting. Uh, family at Christmas. I'm going to see family, and that's great. We love our families, but don't allow family to cause you to what? Err from the faith. Err from the faith. You know? I've been in those situations at holidays, and, you know, hey, uh, it's really good if your kids drink a little brandy when they're three years old. I said, it's really good if, have you ever drank glass? <laughs> they drink the brandy, you'll drink the glass. It's going to be called the force job. Okay. No, causing to, to do what? To err from the what? Faith. Wrong counsel given to you can cause you to what? Err from the faith. Some people get their advice, sad to say, not from spiritual people, or maybe the people they think are spiritual, but they don't get it from spiritual people, and then they, they form a public opinion poll. Like I was hearing people debate about, you know, what was, what was done about Cuba, right or wrong? Well, who cares whether it's right or wrong? If it's an opportunity for the gospel, let's go for it, Okay. Whether or not he shouldn't have or he, they should have done something on their part or whether we're going to help addict If we can get in there, that's all I care about, that we could get in with the gospel and they'd have an, uh, an embassy there and Americans can travel there and bring the fire of the gospel instead of cigars. Going there for cigars. So causing people to err from the faith. We said today in, in a conversation that 80% of Bible college graduates in the United States of America said that the three most important things in their life were a good family, a good job, and a good home. And I thought, I would like to vomit. Like, if there's something that could make me vomit, it would be that statement. Like, they didn't, they didn't say to glorify God, win souls, 
plant churches, it was a good home, a good family, and a good job. Wasn't that sweet? Well, I got a home in heaven. I got a good calling from God, okay? And I got a family called the body of Christ. So shut up. So even Christian colleges can cause you to what? Air from the faith, all right? Air from the faith. The person you're sitting next to could cause you to air. No, that's your husband. Take it. Could cause you to air from the faith. Woody, not Woody. No. See, he's point. You're pointing. You're pointing at them. Sin can cause me to what? Wander from the faith. And it's really interesting. I was asking somebody. I said to them, years ago, I remember 150 Bible college students in your Bible school. How many do you have now? They said, 38. I said, what has caused you to err from the faith? And I, I said that lovingly and, and have invested in these people for 25 years. So I have a right to say it. By the way, some people have a right to say some things that you don't have a right to say. I have a right to say things to my kids you don't have a right to say to them because you have not invested in them. And so sometimes people take a liberty of saying things to people when they, they have never like invested in them and even though you're right, it won't be received and it will not create a capacity to respond to God, all right? I can talk to these guys about basketball because I've invested a lot of time in the sport, you see? And so there's these Johnny come latelys. I'm just, I'm just having fun. So he says, Timothy, watch out, because the love of money, which some have coveted after, have caused them to what? Air from the faith. Overindulgence in computer can cause you to. I, I'm so glad to see there's not a lot of people that use them as much as used to use them. Start reading your Bible. Isn't that good? Huh? If you get locked in a prison someday, it's not going to be with a computer. They'll give you a Bible probably. No, but if you're not careful, technology can cause you to what? Air from the faith. The system can cause you to err from the faith. Religion can cause you to err from the faith. He says, Timothy, watch out. Watch out, because there's a lot of things that came my way that were trying to get me to do what? Err from the faith. Apoplaneo. To wander away, to be drawn away. And usually, did you ever notice that the drawing is very subtle? It always starts with something that seems to be okay. Certain music can cause you to what? Somebody was telling me, hey, did you hear that Christian? Did you? Somebody told me Bob Marley was a Christian. That dope-smoking baboon, if he's a Christian, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. You can, you've got a thing that you, you can survey the kind of teacher I am, and I don't care what you put down, because you're not going to change what I do. Anyway, so interesting to me. Like, so critique the teacher, like big deal. You know? But don't give me that stuff. Just because he sang, you know, they once said that Bob Dylan was born again because he sang a, a song about heaven. Well, that guy worshipped about 80 different types of gods. All right? he wasn't a, he's not born again. Come on. And so music can cause you to what? Hello? Oh, I know. They say Jesus in their song. Yeah, well, yeah. And so I'm, I'm sure the devil knows how to say the name Jesus too. doesn't mean anything to me. So certain music can cause me not to be broken and is not anointed and to be drawn to God, but it drives me, and it causes me to what? Air from the faith. Riding alone in a car with the opposite sex will bring what? Error from the what? Hello? Why are you talking about that? Because I want to. Huh? I was talking to somebody the other day, and I saw, I saw them walking across the parking lot with their arm hanging around the girl. Now, I'm yet to find them. It'll be probably tomorrow. And I will lovingly tell them, I think that is stupid. And that's not biblical, and that's a bad example to have your arm hung over this girl walking across the parking lot, you know? I'm not saying where, this, where the arm was. I don't even know. But it was just like this person was hanging all over this person. Well, I believe in no-touch love, okay? Hello? And if you don't, find another Bible school. That's good, isn't it? I like that, huh? How's that sound? Right? That sounds really good. 
No, that's what we believe in as a ministry. If you don't agree, you have every right to not agree, but you have every right to choose someplace else to go. Because you're not going to get us to err from the faith by your nonsense. Okay? Isn't that good? Yes. I like to take people that have this... I like to take people that have these strange desires about the opposite sex to a hospital that just has AIDS patients and let them walk around for a while. I did that with a person one time. They got cured. They got cured. Okay, so let's not go too far with this. Okay, <laughs> air, air from the faith. See, God says you've got the faith, the faith of the Son of God, the faith of the Holy Spirit. I do not want you to what? Err from the faith. And this is something that Timothy is told. Don't err from the faith. What, what happens when a leader does that? He produces people after his own kind, doesn't he? If I, if I am a money gospel preacher, those people that are sitting under me are going to do what? They're going to have the same spirit put on them. And they do what? Err from the faith. We don't need to evangelize. You've erred from the faith. Body life is not that important. You've erred from the faith. You've erred from the faith. Taking a little sip of wine at Christmas dinner, uh, you've erred from the faith. Hello? Don't tell me your stomach hurts either. Huh? God, I worked in a prison for 10 years. I wish you could see what happens because somebody took a drink. I mean, you know, somebody blew somebody's head off, you know, because they were drunk. And they, they're, they're doing like life in prison, never getting out. Because they, just because they started that stuff, okay? Watching television too much, you will do what? Huh? Air from the faith. Hello? 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 Sitting over in your uh, little dormitory or wherever you live. And, you know, uh, nobody's looking and you can uh, just do that. I was talking to a person today and they were telling me how, how oppressed they are and how, how much they are in incredible oppression from demons. And on and on they were going for like 45 minutes. I stopped them in the conversation. I said to them, how long have you been a pornographic addict? I said, how did you know that? I said, I don't know. Just kind of thought about it. Thought that that's where you're at. When you enter into that realm, what do you do? You err from what? You err from the faith. And you're off in that realm and your mind is thinking in that realm before you know it, somebody rapes somebody. Somebody molests somebody. Somebody goes off in a certain direction. So you get into that stuff and you're doing what? You're erring from the plate. Apoplaneo. And it's demons that do it. Demons do that. They, they're great at seduction and to infiltrate my life. Seduce me, infiltrate my life. I begin to accommodate it and tolerate it. Then it contaminates me and I capitulate it to it, and I'm done. You've what? Aired from the faith. Aired from the faith. And so when you think about the faith, you think about the faith in so many realms, and God is saying, I don't want you to err from the faith. What happened to Saul? Why do you think Saul got his head cut off in 2 Samuel 1? What do you think? That was just like a coincidence? Huh? Interesting, huh? Two people in the Old Testament lost their heads. Saul and Goliath, Mr. Human Reason and Mr. Devil. Goliath was like Mr. Devil, okay? He got his head chopped off, and David did a good job of it, severed it completely. Nothing wrong with that. I know there's a lot of stuff out there about that stuff now. I'm not going that, that route. And Saul lost his head. They hung his head in Dagon's temple. What happened to Saul? He did what? He erred from the faith. He, God told him to wait till Sam, Samuel says, wait till I come up to offer the sacrifice. And he came up on the afternoon of the seventh day. On the morning of the seventh day, Saul offered the sacrifice, and he lost the kingdom. You know what God said to him? You could have been the king forever. You could, you could have been the millennial king. Just read 1 Samuel 13 if you don't believe me. He, he erred with a religious sacrifice. He made a sacrifice, and he lost the kingdom. Imagine that. You did what? You erred from the what? 1 Samuel 15, he did it again. God told him to annihilate everybody, and he saved Agag, and he saved the best. And he said, Samuel said to him, your rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. You've done what? 
you what? This is a pretty heavy last class, isn't it? Aired from the, you thought it was going to be Christmas joy? It is. You aired from the faith. Airing from the faith. A church goes wrong way with music. It does what? It airs from the faith. All right? I'm not saying that I don't like our, I love our music and it can be diversified. But watch out, we do not what? Air from the faith. Air from the faith. So he's really concerned that Timothy's going to live a life of faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So living a life of faith. So that's 6, what was that, 610? Okay, then look at 611. But you, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Okay? So, number two, follow faith. Follow faith. Don't you like that word flee? Have you ever fled a situation? Huh? I went to a Bible study one time in White Marsh, and I walked in, and there was 28 women in the room and one guy. I turned around and said, I'm, le I'm gone. I didn't even say goodbye. I don't do women's Bible studies. And they needed a woman's teacher for that night. Laura Joe should have been there. I don't like, I, I don't do that, all right? Flee. What does it mean to flee? The word is fuego. You better run for it. You know what Joseph did uh, in Potiphar's house? What did he do when she tried to seduce him? Wow, he put on a sprint. Flee. That's what it says, to flee. Wow. Flee these things. You man of God, flee these things. Faith will cause me to what? Flee. Not hang around. How many of you hang around a bee's nest? Huh? If you saw this wasp or bee's nest, would you go and embrace it? Oh, what a cute little bee's nest. They're so good. Reminds me, one time I was in the car with my mother and I swallowed two bees. Somehow they landed on my mouth and I swallowed them. My mother said, ah, she was screaming. I said, they're dead. <laughs> Stomach juice killed them. How many of you would like, you know, like, hey, let's go hang out with snakes? Hey, you know, anybody here, don't, and please don't tell me you do. Nobody here could like snakes. They're disgusting. Huh? It's disgusting things. I love to shoot them. I said, like, you know how people have their little sports that they play in America and Africa? We just killed them. That was our fun thing. Hunt them, burn them, and kill them. You know, I used to like to burn them. That was the fun part. Felt like I was sending them to hell. <laughs> Peter loved it, you know. He loved, like, let's go burn snakes tonight. So we'd trap one, and we'd put like a half a gallon of gas, watch that thing go up in the air and fry. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. But you flee snakes, right? No, I should have done that, but I would. You flee them. You flee them. You flee things in life. Faith flees. Faith flees. If a pastor thought somebody was getting too close to them from of the opposite sect, you should sect, you should flee that person, right? Keep away from that person. If there's somebody in this room, I'm not gonna I shouldn't say it that way. If there's somebody that would cause you to sin because they are somehow able to initiate towards one of your weaknesses, flee them. Let God handle them, okay? But flee that person. If it's your wife, you got a problem. <laughs> Just joking. No, but we need to learn by faith to flee certain things. Flee them. Flee laziness. Oh, I read this. This was good. It was on Grace Hour today. Let me read this to you. I, I don't know what this has to do with my class. Probably nothing, but I, I had it. I probably didn't bring it with me. Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Pastor Love read this today, and this really struck me. This is the prayer that Billy Graham played. He, he prayed this, uh, this prayer. Listen to this prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you to ask your forgiveness and to seek your direction and guidance. We know your word says, Woe to those who call evil good. But that's exactly what we have done. We have lost our spiritual equilibrium and reversed our values. We have exploited the poor and called it the lottery. We have rewarded laziness and we called it welfare. We have killed our unborn and called it choice. 
We have shot abortionists and called it justifiable. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it politics. We have coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it ambition. We have polluted our air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We have ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Cleanse us from sin and set us free. That's interesting, huh? Flee these things, all right? Flee these things. So I have to learn to flee things. Run, run for it. Don't be afraid to run away from sin, all right? You run from it. So you, you are fleeing. You are fleeing. Then it says, follow faith. Follow faith. But thou, O man of God, this is verse 11, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, and faith. So I'm called next to follow faith. And that means in my own life and then faith examples. I was looking at this today kind of like, I was listening to somebody complain about something, you know, about some issue like, you know, the color of the curtains or something in the office or something. And then I was looking at Judson's grave, Judson's grave, you know. I like to amuse myself with this kind of stuff, you know. And uh, I, was reading, I was reading a little bit about where Judson was buried in Malden, Massachusetts. And then I was reading how he lost one child at eight months, another child at two years and three months, and his third child at seven years. Then he lost his first wife, second wife, and third wife. What's your problem? Follow what? Follow faith. That's a man of God, all right? Well, what, what, do we want, what are we following? If you're not careful, you could follow imitations of faith. It's not really faith. So we're called to follow faith. Follow faith. What point is that? Err from the faith, flee by faith, and then what? Follow faith. Is that number three? Okay, then verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. You know why it's a good fight? Because you use God's weapon. Weapons. You know, a lot of people do not like a fight. They, 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 they're pacifists, peaceniks. Modern-day hippies. You know those people that used to have long hair and be, be singing Give Peace a Chance? That was not you, Joe Stoffer. You never had long hair. Did you? Give peace a chance, you know? You know, John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Yoko Noko. Cuckoo. Crazy people, you know? Right? I mean, we fight the good fight of faith. A lot of Christians want a church that is not involved in a fight. Why? It's very comfortable to be in, isn't it? Just, oh, I just want to be in a church. When we go to church on Sunday, we have the organ, the choir, the picket fence, and everything's wonderful. Nobody ever bothers us, leaves us alone. We're not on the internet. Nobody attacks us. The government loves us. Go. Go to that kind of a church. You're very welcome to do that. I want a church that knows how to fight. Are you with me? I want to be in a church that fights the devil. Hello? Not one of these pacifist Christian organizations. You know, that just wants to slide get, and get by. You know, let's just do everything nice. No, he says, Timothy, you fight the good fight of faith. You're in a war. This is a war. And there's not a lot of people that enjoy war. I'm not saying we, well, I shouldn't say we can enjoy it, but I'm saying that's Christianity, isn't it? What do you think they're doing in China? Christians in China, what are they doing? They're fighting the good fight of faith. In the Sudan, what are they doing? Fighting the good fight of faith. All right? You can see many places in the world, and Christians in America need to fight the good fight of faith. I don't like when people tell me I can't do something, you know? You can't do this. You can't do that. Really? Like, when did you become the law? What about the verses that say it's better to obey God than men? I'm not talking about civil disobedience, although I'd like to use a rocket launcher on pornographic places that sell that stuff. I'm hoping during the millennial reign, I get to use rocket launchers. I just, I'm going to ask for that mission. Can I be the, can I, can I use, the, you know, those shoulder-mounted rocket launchers? That's what I want. I want to blow out that place up on Route 40, all right? 
Not when anybody's there, just like wipe it off the face of the earth. I don't know, it's just like fight, you know? Uh, fight the good fight of faith. This is, this is important. What do you want to be? Just one of these persons that slides by and says, you're an undercover Christian. Nobody will even know it. You're under the covers, you know? Like, that's what it means. Like, I'm an undercover Christian. And I, well, if I was to say that, I might lose my job. So what? So what if you lost your job? Is that the end of your world? Huh? The end, and I'm not telling you to do, you know, to be presumptuous and live outside of God's leading, but we as Christians are supposed to be fighters. Would you, would you like to be with the congregation or Absalom's people, or would you like to be one of David's mighty men? What would you like to be? I'd like to be the guy swinging that sword that killed 300 people at one time. That's, that's what I dream about. <laughs> no, those guys are like heroes. Like, this guy just like, there's some, there's some lentils, you know? You know, I don't want to be just this fast race car driver going from Carlisle to Baltimore. You know, eating beef jerky and whatever, you know? We gotta, we're in a what? A war. And we need to train, do we not? Hmm? I don't think you're sending in weekend warriors when you, got, when you have a job to kill Ben Laden. You send in Navy SEALs. Those guys can do it, okay? Those guys are trained for warfare, to do anything. You know, they're, they're, they're fighters. They're trained that way. They're just trained to like, that's what they're trained to do. To say it the right way, they're trained to kill. And we should be trained to uh, go, go against the kingdom of darkness. Trained that way. Fight the good fight of faith. And it takes faith to fight the good fight. And it's always going to be a war. Trouble on every side. And by the way, until you get to heaven, it really never ends. Whew! No, if you want to sit down on your lazy couch and eat potato chips, you know, and just grow the wrong way. <laughs> no, really. That, that's what a lot, a lot of American Christianity has become. How is it that two men could evangelize the whole world in the book of Acts? And we got millions of Christians and we can't do anything. We can't even get, get abortion turned, o turned over. Right? We can't, we can't even go against the, the laws that are against Christianity. Two men evangelized the whole, uh, that whole area of Turkey, Paul and Barnabas. These are two guys that were spirit-filled. And you, you imagine Paul, they kill him and then he goes back to the same place they stoned him? What is he, loco? Yeah, he's fighting a what? The good fight. I love his last statement in 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And, those, and that crown is for all those who love his appearing. He says, my life was nothing but a war. Now, if, that's what, if you don't want that, fine. That's your choice. But I'm saying a leader better be a fighter. All right? A leader better be a person who's going to lead in the battle. You know what point man is in a war? When you're in the jungle, the point man is, is the guy in front. He gets it first. All right? Point man. I want to just send everybody out. I want to send everybody to pray, send everybody to evangelize, send everybody, and I'll just sit back and, you know, watch Fox News. Fight the what? The, is, what kind of a fight is it? A good fight. A good fight. A good fight. I remember I was evangelizing in Baltimore one time, and this demonic guy came up from behind me, and he started cursing Jesus. I had a microphone, and I was preaching, and this guy, he, was, he had Rastafarian hair down to his shoulders, and he was blaspheming Jesus. I turned around and I said, I'm going to count to three and I'm going to knock your front teeth out. Uh -huh. He looked at me. He knew I was serious. He just, he just started running. And guess what? I would have done it too. I would have done it. I wasn't ordained. Yes, I was. I, <laughs> so I, would. I still would have done it. Yeah. I was preaching in Greece one time and this was this demonic guy 
screaming blasphemies against Jesus and screaming at me, give me the microphone. I want to speak about what I believe. And he kept yelling, give me the mic, give me the mic. I said, you want the mic? He said, yeah. I parted his skull with it. What a, what a good mic I ruined. That was a good microphone. I dented the mic. And he dropped to the ground. I told the guy next to me, take him away. i got to finish my message. So it, was, it was a what? It was a fight. We were in a, and I wasn't ordained then. It was a fight. It was a war. Every time, we st every time we stood to preach, it was a war. It was a war. People yelling, screaming, trying to pull your, you rip things away from you, take your Bible away. What do you think? That was like a joke? That's a what? It's a war. We were in a war. I was with my brother in China, and we were preaching um, in this certain place, and the police came, eight of them. And they told my brother, stop preaching. I love my brother. He's interesting. He put the mic down. He turned around and said, listen to me. He said, I'm going to finish this message, and you do what you got to do, but get off my case till I'm done. And then he turned around, and we kept preaching, and then he finished the message, and they walked away. They were intimidated. It's good to intimidate Satan. He can be intimidated. But a lot of Christians are so afraid of him, he, they just bow down to him. Like what he wanted Jesus to do in Luke 4. My brother said, no, we're finishing the message. So mind your business. So the, I'm thinking, he, I'm looking at him like, wow, this is the police in China. And he's got to live there. And uh, he had 100 students in the mainland of China in the 80s. And he would teach them the Bible. He would be in a school, he'd open up the Bible with 100 students and teach them the Bible in communist China. They could, hmm, quite interesting, quite interesting. What, were, what, were he, what was he doing? And Dick Loftus and those people, they were doing what? Uh, you're not going to send in mamsy pamsy, fag-loving Christians into that, those kind of scenes. You know, come on. I don't mean that they're fag, you know, you know what I mean. Like they're, they're like, at the, you might, they might as well be gay. I don't know what they are. You know, I just, oh, praise the Lord. We can't do that. That's not right. Okay, whatever. Get away from me. You know? <laughs> fight the what? The good fight. The good fight. Timothy, this is a war. Wage a good warfare, First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.18. Now you may say, I don't, know, I don't know about this stuff. Well, pray about it. Now, don't just, like, don't just get negative in your mind about what I'm saying right now, as a few of you are, because maybe you're thinking, I could never do that. Well, maybe none of us could ever do that, but God can, all right? Fight the good fight of faith. Next, the next thing he says is, tr in verse 17, trust in the living God. Verse 17, charge them that are rich in the world that they be not high-minded, but trust in the living God. See, he's talking about faith again. I trust in God. I trust in God. I have faith in the living God. And then next, he says in verse 21, again, he ends the epistle with this very statement again, with some professing, and they're talking about science. You see, see verse 20? O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so-called. We talked about that in Grace Our Faith. What in the hell do you want to go to the moon for? God already told you there's nothing on the moon or Mars. What a waste of our money. And then they're going into the depths of the sea, and the only thing that are there is our sins. What are you looking for? What the heck are you looking for on the moon? What are you going to find on the moon? Well, we went to the moon. First ones to Mars. Somebody's being us in a space race. What do I care? What is that for? We could be printing Bibles with that money. He had any spiritual integrity. He says, these vain, profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called, which some professing have what? Erred concerning the faith. He's talking about watching out. Do not err concerning the faith. So this is a, a, a key injunction, key commands to us, key definition for us about the faith. Now, just some verses to think about in the book of Hebrews, all right? I just want you, you don't have to turn there, but uh, just look at some of these verses, which I think are quite interesting. 
Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18. Okay, God, it's, it's all about how God draws us. How God draws us. By faith. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Coming boldly to the throne of grace. And it talks about coming boldly. By faith, coming towards God and getting grace and mercy. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Initiation is for us to draw near. Hebrews 7, 25. Coming to he who makes intercession for us. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. That cometh to God, believes that he is. Hebrews 12, 22. I'm sorry, 12, 1 and 2. And then 12, 22. So the initiations are for us to come forward to receive faith. The faith of God. To make our approach to God. That outside of faith, the man of, the man of God, what kind of a leader is that person going to be if they are not people of faith? They live in error. They have withdrawn from God. And they have fled from God, and they really have never making an approach to God, and they set an example for people that really need to know God and grow in faith. Now, I want to give you um, seven things that I think are evident from this epistle of really what a man of God is. And you can apply it to women of God too, because we're talking about leadership. But he keeps saying to Timothy, you know, O man of God. Look at verse 11. The thou, O man of God. Then he says, O Timothy. By the way, when he uses the word O, O man of God, and O Timothy. See those, see those two expressions? 1 Timothy 6, 11. I hope we're there. We've been there all night. 1 Timothy 6, 11. But you, O man of God. And then... Verse 20, O Timothy. This is interesting what this means. It's an exclamation with a great emphasis. Paul is directly addressing Timothy with a great emphasis and exclamation. O man of God. And he, he really just wants to edify him in the truth of the fact that he's a man of God. Great emphasis, a direct address. It says in one uh, commentary, a direct address of admiration. He, has a, he admires Timothy, a direct address of admiration, an exclamation, O oh, man of God. The emphasis that Paul is giving in his initiation to Timothy, O oh, man of God. Before I, I do this, let's take about a 10-minute break and we'll come back because I don't want to start this and then have to take a break after and it's almost time for break, but not really, but take a few minutes. Don't forget your tests are not due until Sunday. If you have them tonight, great. But Sunday is when they're due.